Okay, now we can start over, and I can still get older tomorrow. The rest of you can complain about it all you want, but uh, I think that's a gift from God. You know, it's taken me 65 years to get here. I'm not going back now. <clears throat> By the way, I checked with God. I found out that a birthday is a special gift from God, yeah. and I already checked with Him. You cannot exchange it for anything else. So, we're stuck. We're in getting to know Jesus lesson 143. That's in volume 11 on pages 127 to 138. The Bible text is on pages 128 to 130. And the lesson notes are on pages 131 to 136. Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And tonight we're going to talk about how to handle stress. Just a real quick, is anybody here undergoing any current stress? No, bit. Okay. I see. And have any, try to fix that. Anybody gone through any stress in the last year? Oh God. Uh, you know, I'm thinking. Is there anybody here that has trouble raising their hand? <laughs> Okay, we're right down here in the last part. I was so stressed out. I don't know if I can teach this lesson. Oh, I still got hair left. I haven't pulled my hair out yet. You still have hair. You know, yeah, you still have hair on top. I still have hair. That's better than the yeah. other guy, right, Bob? <laughs> uh, no, you, you got hair too. Right, Richard. When some people's hair turns gray, other people's hair turns loose. He needs some hair. He needs some hair. Yeah, his hair turns loose, so he better watch it when the birds are flying over. Hey, we're right back up here. We're in lesson 143, so we're right here at the end of the prayer, ready to jump down here into Saturday or Thursday night and Friday. <coughs> That's coming. But we're right here right now finishing up the things uh, of the Lord's Supper and the thing that happened on Thursday evening before. Uh, I'm going to presume that Jesus was arrested before midnight, <coughs> definitely after sundown. So what is the most stressful event that you have ever experienced? How did you respond to it? Did you uh, pause, panic, or pray? Okay. That's just three responses. There may all be some three. others if we were going to talk about it. All three. Yep, all three. All three. All three. Probably on occasion all three, huh? Really yeah. Have you ever had to face the news of your own pending death? No. Uh, but you know someone who has. No. Every one of us has lost some. I've experienced that. You've experienced it. You know I'm going to die. Well, we you know are. you're going to die. He, he is. I'm not. <laughs> are you going to do They're, like a lot of shots? Yeah. We, we, I, I know about my dad. You know about your dad? Yeah. Martha, so you've you got a situation like a that you know is yes, coming. Yes, he's going to whip me up. And maybe soon, maybe who knows what we're going to do. I like that too. Well, I know. I like the way he would be the best one. How about news about someone that you love very much is going to die soon? We are, are, uh, oh, or maybe a... Uh, Maybe a beloved pet that you just dearly and, and the doctor tell you it's got a, a situation. How do you think you would handle that news? Now, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 26, verse 30, and then verses 36 to 46, and in Mark 14, verses 26 to uh, 42, and then uh, Luke 22, verses 39 to 46, and John 18, <laughs> verse 1. So all four of them get into tonight's discussion a little bit. Jesus takes the apostles with him to the Garden of Gethsemane to have some time of private prayer before while he waits for the beginning of his execution. Now, you know, last week we had the public prayer with the uh, twelve or what the, the eleven apostles. Judas has left the building. Yeah, that evil man. So now he knows that his crucifixion is coming, and the rejection of the very people that he is dying for is in front of him, including the rejection of these 11 that haven't rejected him yet. And he knows it. But he knows it's coming. Talk about loneliness. The mental, the emotional, the physical stress has to be building to an excruciating level. Now, you know, a prisoner that's been sentenced to death is one thing. I'm a pawn in the hands of these people who have me uh, wrapped up and, and, and under control. But for somebody that's got the power that Jesus has to go through this, it's a whole different, whole different scenario, whole different situation. What does Jesus do? Well, let's talk about it a little bit. Number one, have friends nearby. Matthew 26, 30. 
and 36 to 38, Mark 14, 26, 32 to 34, Luke 22, 30, 39, John 18, 1. Here gets John's comment. When he had finished praying, Jesus left. Now, Matthew and Mark say, when they had sung a hymn, they went out with the disciples across the Kidron Valley to the Mount of Olives. On the other side, there was an olive grove, and his disciples, they followed him. They went to it. Now, I can 70, his first prayer. Now, Jesus then went with the disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, not such a big hurry here, sit here while I go over there and pray. And pray that you will not fall into temptation, Luke adds in here. When Peter and the two sons, James and John, the two sons of Zebedee, he took them along with him, and he began to be sorrowful, to be deeply distressed. Maybe if you put yourself in Jesus' shoes for a moment, you can get a little glimpse of what he is feeling. And I do want to deal a bit with feelings tonight. I, I do want you to think about what Jesus felt and what it means to you. They were deeply distressed and troubled, and then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. You know what? <laughs> well, you'll work on it. Jesus concluded the events in the upper room with a benedictory prayer. We covered that in the previous lesson. He now proceeds with the eleven apostles. Judas will arrive but just a little bit later to the Garden of Gethsemane because he needs some time alone with God before he uh, anything further transpires. Richard? Uh, Glenn, back in our college days, back when we had counseling classes, we used this Taylor Johnson temperamental analysis. And we ran Jesus through the Taylor Johnson, and he ranked a little high in clinical depression. A man of sorrow. Now you can imagine why some of the things you've done. I mean, we've all done. Can't blame it on him. I'm just as guilty. When they arrive at the garden, Jesus leaves the eight apostles. He takes Peter, James, and John a little further. Now, you'll notice that there were a few occasions, maybe three or four, when Jesus took just Peter, James, and John. Out of the twelve, he kind of signaled them out to be maybe a little bit extra special, uh, kind of the leader of the leaders, if you will. And in any organization... If we were to just sit here and just oh, we got to gather over this church building and sit around for two hours, somebody would eventually say, hey, why don't we do this? And that person would be recognized as the leader and we would do something. Well, because it's natural for any group that somebody's going to take the initiative to lead that group, good, bad, or otherwise. <laughs> what about leaders? Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, but we won't talk about those leaders right now tonight. But Jesus would take Peter, James, and John up to the Mount of Transfiguration, into the room when he raised the uh, uh, man's daughter back to life. And here, now, at, I would say one of the most intimate moments of his life, as he goes to pray. He tells them to watch while he goes to be alone with God. Now, even though there are some situations that you have to face alone, it's always comforting to know that you have friends nearby. If you've ever been through a crisis and you had somebody that you could call and talk to or somebody that you knew just they were in the other room, maybe you couldn't talk to them about this situation, but you just knew they were there, you knew that they cared. I can't express how much I've appreciated people that have come up to me and said, Glenn, how is your ministry going? We've been praying for you. And over the years, California, and, and some of those people have scattered other places, and still, once in a while they'll contact and say, how are you doing? We've been praying for you. Here in Florida, we've had people, and I just think, oh, they know what I do, but they don't think about a lot about it, and all of a sudden, somebody says, Glenn, we've been praying for you. It's nice to know that somebody else cares, no matter what you're going through. See, if they can understand 
They can respect your privacy and maybe keep other people from interrupting your privacy. Jesus needed some time. He needed to make sure nobody's going to come in and say, ah, you're under my tree. Uh, I need a drink of water. Or uh, you can't meet in this place. You guys have got to go somewhere else. He didn't need that. He needed some private time with God. So he's got the uh, eight over here, the three over here, and he is over here. <clears throat> Seek God in prayer. Matthew 26, 39, Mark 14, 35, 36, Luke 22, 44. Going a little further. He would throw about a stone's throw. Now how far can you throw a stone? 50, 60 feet, maybe? Hit the road. Well, maybe 20 feet if you that are my age. Uh, beyond them, he knelt, uh, a stone throw beyond them, and he knelt down. Huh? How big is the stone? Well, that may be. Are you using a slingshot or just your arm? So he fell with his face to the ground, and he prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. It's kind of like, I don't want to go through this. Let's get it done. Let's get it over with. I, I'm not happy here. My father, or as Mark says, Abba. Father, if it is possible for you, if you are willing, key word, take this cup from me. Not as I will, but as you will. Chris. In this case, dying on the cross for you. Kind of like he doesn't want to do it, but he knows he has to do it. Bob? Um, when I read that, I, I get a little bit different perspective out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the cup can be future, the cross, or the cup can be present for what he's going through right now. Because when yeah. he entered the garden, he said, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. He was drinking a cup right there and would have yeah. died, except that he prayed that the Father would right. remove the cup, and the Father That's sent right. an angel to minister That's to right. him, exactly and he right. was able to go to the cross. Yep. Father, uh -huh. let those guys that come arrest me, come arrest me, and let's get it over with. That's a very good I, response. I appreciate yeah. that. Sharing sure. sure. that. Let's go on. An angel from heaven appeared to him that strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling <coughs> on the ground. Dr. Luke would point that out. Yeah. Jesus removes himself from the apostles just a little further. Falls face down on the ground. Now, you know the pictures. You usually see him kind of leaning up against the rock. Maybe he leaned up against the rock. Maybe he fell flat on the dirt. Uh, maybe there's no rock to fall against. In the midst of this emotional pain, Jesus cries out that he needs strength to get through this. And God sends an angel who gives Jesus some physical inch presence for encouragement. Sometimes it's nice to have a friend nearby. And sometimes you've been going through that crisis and, and somebody didn't know a thing about what you were going through, but they just happened to call you up or they happened to stop by or they just happened to, you run into them and, and that's just all you needed to find the strength. Now Jesus continues to pray. The stress is so intense that the blood squeezes through the pores of his skin like sweat that falls to a ground. Jesus has already started to bleed for our sins and he hasn't even been arrested yet. The arrest, the trial, the feeling of those spikes going through his hands, and that's all still ahead of him. Science and medical studies have verified that intense stress can cause a person to literally sweat blood. Your blood pressure can get so high that it just oozes out through your skin. Although you've been through some horrendous events in your life, it's rather unlikely, though not impossible, that your stress has caused such a phenomenon in you. But I'm sure that if enough people watch this lesson, somebody's in their discussion group going to say, hey, yeah, it happened to me once. And the spirit goes, hmm, now to me. And I was really scared because I was sweating drops of blood. I'm sure it's happened. Right now, I'm feeling some of the agony and anticipation that Jesus is experiencing as he deals with the fact that he's going to die in less than 18 hours. Now, he doesn't know necessarily the time frame, 
<laughs> he knows that it's, well, he, he knows it's going to be tomorrow, but he doesn't know, uh, he may or may not know the process of the arrest and the trial and all that stuff. Mm. Let's go on. Friends don't, and I'd like to have a friend nearby, but friends don't always understand your pain. Matthew 26, 40, 41, <coughs> Mark 14, 37, 38, Luke 22, 45, and 46. Then he returned to his disciples and he found them sleeping, exhausted from sorrow. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Interesting. He's got Peter, James, and John there. He kind of singles Peter out as the main one for the attention of those three. Watch and pray, he says, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. After some time of prayer, Jesus goes to check on Peter, James, and John. He finds them asleep. Now, it's unclear how far away they are from the other eight apostles. Did they go a stone throw from the other apostles or less? I don't know. But uh, the other apostles were very likely asleep also. Hey, you've just had a full meal. You've had a rather somewhat emotional night. You're out here and it's dark. It's peaceful and it's quiet. You don't have cars rushing by or airplanes flying overhead or internet uh, sending you text messages or emails. You don't have uh, a ball game going on. You know, in the next neighborhood. <coughs> and you've had a full day of it. And it's been a rather eventful day, by the way. Wouldn't you be likely to fall asleep too? <laughs> Jesus scolds them for not staying awake and being on the lookout. He knows that their emotions and their intentions are good, but their actions are coming up a little short. How many times have you had good intentions... But somehow, somehow those intentions just didn't quite get carried out. Been there, go to charge, huh? <coughs> when you get through or going through a stressful event, others may care, but they may not always understand. Their lack of understanding and may appear to be a lack of caring, but oftentimes they just don't know what to do to help. How many times have you watched somebody go through and you want to do something for them, but you can't? You don't have what is needed to fix their problem. And maybe that's a good thing. Sometimes we want to help people and it's like rescuing a butterfly coming out of a cocoon and they don't learn to help themselves. And so it may be hard to let them go through that. Uh, you, you have, each situation you have to decide for yourself. Is my helping them going to keep them from building the strength that they need to help themselves? Or is there a situation where they'd help themselves if they could, but they really need some outside help? There's things that get to know Jesus' ministry I am not good at. I'm not a good web designer. I've tried that. I am grateful I've got somebody else that designed my website. I am not a publisher. I'm not a good printer. Some of your books reflect that. I'm praying that I've got uh, somebody that's working on Locating a publisher that will print these books professionally in color, no blue streaks through them or missing pages or any of that sort of thing. Where are that missing pages? Because there's some things I'm not good at. I'm good at teaching a class, but you guys have been the ones that have been good at biting and bringing other people to the class. And that's why it's funny, because you're better at that than I am. And even though I, I can't have to keep trying to work on some of these other things, that other people are good at. But you look at any any ministry, <coughs> excuse me, you look at any business and you'll see that there are other people, the boss is good at this, but he's not good at that. And he's got other people around him that are good at doing other things. And it is the team that makes it work, not the individual. Take the individual out, the team may fall apart. Take the individual out, or maybe someone else will rise up, and the team will continue to function even without the key individual. Because it's a team that makes it work. And Jesus needs a team just like everybody else. So you don't know how to help. Though they care, these people are helpless. How often have you watched somebody go through a stressful situation and you were not able to do anything to lighten their love? We just talked about that. 
Well, here's how to handle stress. <laughs> this is a statue in the Garden of Gethsemane of Jesus, uh, supposedly Jesus praying. Uh, he may have had a pile of rocks to, to lean on. He may have been flat on the ground. You know, and, and we always seem to think that we have to put our hands together to pray. Yeah, <laughs> have some of your best prayers been said right like this? <laughs> But it's a nice picture. It just tries to maybe help drive home the point that before he could go to the cross, he needed to do some of this. Some knee time. Richard? The old farmer fell into a well head first. And the best prayer he ever prayed is, Lord, save me with his feet straight up in the air. Mm -hmm. His ah. head stuck in the mud. Yeah, oh gosh. Yeah. That'll get you to pray real quick. And you don't have the means to pull your head out of the out of mud. You can pray really fast. Well, Another thing we do is pray. This is called push. Everybody say push. 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 Pray until something happens. Push. Matthew 26, 42 to 44. Mark 14, 39 to 40. You can write that down in your book. Push. Pray. So he, he left them and went away at once and prayed the third time. Saying the same thing. So Jesus returns to pray some more. He isn't done yet. Less is said about this encounter with the Father, except that Jesus again checks the apostles. They're asleep, and he goes a third time to pray. Maybe he's abiding time until the arresting entourage arrives, or maybe he's pleading for the strength to get through what is coming. I'm kind of opinion of the latter. It could be very well both, as you pointed out just a little bit ago. But either way, to go... One time of prayer wasn't enough. Two times, uh, and it were these hour-long sessions, both of them. We evidently the first one was. Was the third one an hour long? How long before? Sometimes one prayer isn't enough. Sometimes you have to spend hours or go back and pray again and again and again before you get peace, resolution, and understanding or control of that situation. Even though the reaction to Jesus' first prayer was intense and as shown in him sweating the drops of blood, he hasn't gotten to the level of peace about his dying on the cross for our sins. But what he still needs that time alone with his Father. Does that maybe connect a little bit of the intensity of this event? Sometimes Jesus needed more time with God Sometimes you and I need not to rush our prayer time, but continue as we wait on God for some direction, for some sort of peace, for some sort of resolution. There's one more for you. Everybody say frog. 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 Fully rely on God. Matthew 26, 45, 46, Mark 14, verses 41 and 42. You will find those two words very helpful to you in your prayer life. When he returned the third time to the disciples, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. There comes my betrayer. Okay, after the third round of prayer. How do you say it, Judas Iscariot? How do you spell it? Say what? Judas Iscariot. Iscariot. I-S-C-A-R-I-O-T. Judas Iscariot. A name you would not want to claim. And that's the truth. After the third round of prayer, which had been a repetition of the previous prayer. Jesus gathers the apostles. He announces that <coughs> it is time. He's prayed as much as he needed to. And most likely he sees the torches of Judas and the arresting officers approaching. Time for prayer is over. <coughs> Jesus is ready to fully rely on God. For what is coming and for what will be accomplished by it. When it gets to the bottom line, yes? How do we know when we pull it 
How do you know when you're fully, you, you, you'll feel a peace? I think that's the best answer I can give you. You'll just work through the situation until you just feel like, okay, this is all I can do. I feel peace about it. And you go forward. When it gets to the bottom line, we must fully rely on God for guidance, help, strength, provision, care, etc. God knows what is best, and it is our challenge to bring everything to Him in prayer and to seek His leading on how we are to deal with each situation. Our Christian walk is a journey, not a destination. We will arrive at our destination when we leave this earth and we go through the party gates and oh, Jesus yeah. says, well done, my faithful oh, servant, yeah. come and enter into the rest that has been prepared oh, for you. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're on a journey. And if you've read Pilgrim's Progress or any portion of it, you know, it's a difficult book to read in my opinion, but he is constantly on a journey. But his journey is not that way. His journey is like this. And so movie? is yours. Did they make a movie of, of Pilgrim's Progress? Did they make a movie of it? I've got, I've got the movies, Christiana and Pilgrim's Progress. So you're on VHS. Liam Neeson You've got them on VHS. So. Liam Neeson is one of them. No, what? It's one of Liam Neeson's first movies. Oh, is that right? Oh, oh I like I, Liam Neeson. Well, there's a movie out of it. You can check it out. Chris? Yes. Oh, I have oh, that on. Unstoppable has been out for a while. Yeah, yeah it's, oh, it's, it's getting so yeah. yeah. it's, it's, That's a little off subject. We need to get back on subject here. It's crazy. We decided, hey, Glenn's not the only one who gets off on Dragon Trails, huh? Fully rely on God. God knows what your challenge is. We will not arrive until we leave this world. Meanwhile, we will find strength to get us through any situation if we fraud. fully rely on we God. Are a fraud. <laughs> a fraud. Prayer is the number one tool to help us in that process. Reading the Bible will also help us understand His will. So, in conclusion, push. Yes, Lord. Uh, just go ahead. I wanted to relay a story that, uh, about well, prayer. Go ahead. Well, many of you may have heard one time or another of Napoleon Hill. Oh, yes. Napoleon Hill wrote Think and Grow Rich. And he was a studier of success and stuff like that. But in his real life, his son was born without ears. Oh. And he prayed, and he prayed for four years. And his son began to hear through the bones in his back. People came through all over the world to investigate how he was able to do that. Prayer. Napoleon's Hill son, <coughs> Hill's son, born without ears, <coughs> and was able to hear through, became able the to hear through the bones in his back. Through the bones in his back. But you know, a lot of people with hearing loss, a hearing aid may not affect them here, but if they put a hearing uh, uh, aid back here on this bone, a lot of times That's they can hear. Well, now they've got cochlear implants and other things they can do. So the bottom line, don't quit praying until something, something happens. Push, push, push your way through your prayer. <laughs> and fully rely on God. Now you're going to look at that thing out there inside your yard going, bro, when you're trying to go, and you're going to say, fully rely on God and get that frog out of here so I can go to sleep. <laughs> God is always available, even when the frog's croaking outside your window and you're trying to sleep. He is always available to hear and to respond to your prayers. Next week, Jesus is going to be betrayed by a close friend and arrested by an illegal mob. What has he done to justify being arrested? And why are they doing it at night? Right now, we're going to break into discussion group. Turn over to page 137 for our discussion time. Yeah, that keeps cutting out. I noticed. You can follow us and stay in touch with what is happening with the Getting to Know Jesus Bible Study Ministry on Plaxo, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and watch our video clips on YouTube and GodTube. Getting to Know Jesus is sponsored by New Hope Gospel Ministries. 
If you'd like to follow along with us and start your Getting to Know Jesus Bible Study group, or just pray for us or support our ministry, you can go to www.gettingtoknowjesus.org and find all the information that we have available for you. If you look at the lower right-hand corner, there's a button where you can make a safe and secure donation to the Getting to Know Jesus Bible Study Ministry. Or you can go to the order page and order your Getting to Know Jesus books for your Bible study group. Thank you for stopping by and keep us in your prayers and let us know how we can pray for you.